how many trees are there? For example, if we wanted to count trees on three vertices, you might say it could look like a V like this, or a V like this, or a straight line. But in some sense, all these trees are the same. That is, they're recording the same information. We call them isomorphic because this tree is just saying a vertex is connected to a vertex of degree two, is connected to another leaf, another vertex of degree one. They're all recording that same information. What if, however, we wanted to keep track of how we're labeling the vertices? For instance, on this tree, we might label the vertices one, two, three. Now, notice labeling one, two, three gives you a tree that's equivalent to a tree where you label the vertices three, two, one. Because in both of these, one and three are just leaves, and two is the vertex at the center, the vertex of degree two. Both are recording the same information. However, the information that either one of those trees records is different than the information recorded in a tree that's labeled so that instead of having two at the center, it has one at the center. And then at either end, it has three and two, or two and three. Similarly, these are both different from the tree that has three at the center, and at each end then has a one and a two. So we'd say there's a total of three labeled trees on three vertices. How about on four vertices? Again, you might try and think, what are the different ways that four vertices could be connected by edges to form a tree? Up to various symmetries, you'll find that it'll either have to be some kind of U shape or some rotation of this shape, or a single vertex that connects with three other vertices. Notice these are fundamentally different because here we have a degree three vertex, where here we have one, two, two, one. Then we can begin to count how are the different, how many ways can we label each of these. On this vertex, it won't matter what gets labeled on the outside. What's decisive is what's labeled this distinctive component. Labeling it one will give you something fundamentally different than labeling it two or three or four. However, labeling this one is the same as another tree where it's labeled one, independent of what you label the leaves. These leaves could be labeled two, three, four, or they could be labeled three, two, four, but both are recording the same information. That, however, is very different than this, in the, than this picture where the vertex is labeled two. The vertex of degree three is labeled two. So there's a total, we'd say, of one, two, three, four ways that we could label this form of a tree on four vertices. How about this form? Well, you might say we have to pick some label for the first vertex. Could be one, two, three, or four. Let's just say it's two. But note there were four choices we had to four options we had to choose between for that one. We could have labeled it one, two, three, or four. For the next vertex, we have three remaining options. Since we already picked two, we can label it one, three, or four. Let's just pick one, but notice there are three options for us to choose from. For the next vertex, we can label it three or four. So there are two remaining options. Let's just pick three leaving four for the last vertex. Therefore, you may think that there's a total of four times three times two, or 24 ways that we can label trees of this form. However, notice, labeling it two, one, three, four will give you a structure that's equivalent to the structure that's labeled in the reverse, that's labeled four, three, one, two because both are recording the same associations between vertices. 
So because we have this mirror symmetry occurring, we have to divide it by two to find there's a total of 12 ways of getting distinct labeled vertices of this form. That gives you a total of 12 and four, which gives us 16 labeled trees on four vertices. How about on five vertices or six or seven or a hundred? Is there a way for us to count the number of distinct trees on n vertices. Cayley's theorem tells us that there is. Cayley gives us a formula to quickly count the number of labeled trees, saying that the number of labeled trees on n vertices can be calculated by just taking n to the power of n minus two. Hence, if you want to know the number of distinct label trees on three vertices, just take three to the three minus two to the one, which would be three, just like we found. If you want to know what it will be on four vertices, just take four to the four minus two or two, which will give you 16, just like we found. On five vertices, it will come out to be five to the five minus two or five cubed, which is 120. Why is this true? You might think it's a difficult thing to prove. That is, how would you show that there's exactly n to the n minus 2 labeled trees on n vertices? And it is quite difficult to try and count it directly. But here an important trick from combinatorics will help us. If you want to count the number of fingers on your right hand, and you find difficulty doing that, what you can instead do is put your right hand into a one-to-one -one correspondence with your left hand. Recognize that each finger aligns with one other finger. We call this a bijection. Then, instead of counting the fingers on your right hand, you can just count the fingers on your left hand. And since you know that there are one, two, three, four, five fingers on your left hand, there must also be five fingers on your right hand. That might seem a little bit silly, but this is a powerful technique. Whenever we want to count something, we can instead find a one-to-one -one correspondence between that thing and something else, and instead count that other thing. Here, instead of counting label trees on n vertices, we'll create a correspondence between that and sequences of numbers. That is, numbers, a sequence of n minus one numbers, a1, a2, through, a n minus two, where each of those numbers is some value between one and n. This is called the proofer code for the tree. Then clearly, since there are n choices for the first number, n choices for the second, up through n choices for the last, there will be a total of n to the n minus two options, or a total of n to the n minus 2 such series, meaning that there must also be n to the n minus 2 labeled trees on n vertices. So how do you go from a tree to such a code? The process is quite simple. Take any tree. Let's take a tree on six vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's label those vertices. So we'll label them one, two, three, four, five, six. Then, here's how we proceed. We begin by looking at the smallest leaf. The leaf with the smallest numbered label. Here, the smallest leaf is among three, six, four, and five, it's three. Corresponding to that leaf, since it's a leaf of degree one, it must be attached to exactly one other vertex. So we'll look at the, uh, by one vertex, by one to one other um, vertex. So we'll look at the adjacent, adjacent vertex. What does the edge connect this leaf to? Three is connected to one, so we'll record the number one. Then we remove that leaf and the edge. Then you find the next smallest leaf. We still have five, four, six, so the next smallest one would be four. 
we see what 4 is attached to. 4 is attached to a 2. So then we remove the 4 and the 2, having recorded the 2. Now we look, our leaves are 5 and 6. So the next one would be 5 is the smallest leaf, which is also attached to a 2. Then we remove that edge and the leaf. Leaving us now with leaves number 2 and 6. The smallest of those is 2, which is attached by an edge to 1. So our proof or code for this tree would just be 1, 2, 2, 1. What's incredible is that every tree has a unique proof or code. And given a proof or code, you can go back and recover the tree. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these trees and these codes. Hence, having counted the codes to be n to the n minus 2 demonstrates the number of trees is n to the n minus 2 as well.